today I am going to show you how to put in a big cert. So uh, I pulled out the spark plug, and it might be hard to see. I don't know. Is this, yeah, it's focusing. Okay. Um, it, it turned out that hole had a helicoil in it, and uh, the helicoil pulled out with the plug. So that needs to be repaired. Um, so we're going to do that today. I've never put in a big cert before. I'm making this video because I was looking for videos on big cert and I couldn't find. Alright, first thing is you need to make sure that the engine, that the valves aren't depressed. So here, so I took off the valve covers. And, um, that one's loose. I can just spin the, the uh, piece that it hits on. And that one's up to the exhaust side. That one's loose. And also we need to make sure that the piston is down. Oh, I'm screwed over here. So we do that by dropping... Oops, there we go. Drop a screwdriver in there and pull it out. I'm putting my index finger right where right where the spark plug hole is, and that's um, should be long enough. You want it to be pretty much as far down as you can get. Uh, I've gone ahead and vacuumed up uh, at, around that spark plug hole and used some lacquer thinner and cleaned it out uh, and uh, made sure it was as clean as it possibly could be. All right, so let me show you the kit. Okay, when I ordered the kit, here's what they sent me. They sent me this kit, along with some Loctite. I had to order the insert separately. And we're going to go into the insert in a second. Um, the big cert kit consists of... Get rid of that. Consists of a reamer, a tap, this is a thread former. This is the insertion tool. Um, and there's a uh, finding in here is a, a handle extension and something to make it a T handle as well as a hex key to take the piece off of the driver. When you order the kit, you need to determine whether you need the regular kit or the deep kit. I don't know who or why you would need the deep kit given that you can just use uh, your own hex sockets to drive it and use your own extensions to make it longer, and the uh, deep kit's $130 anymore. You need to decide which uh, inserts you need. Uh, I decided that I needed aluminum 16.8 millimeters. Uh, they actually don't encourage aluminum. Uh, they say you can use a steel insert and an aluminum head. Uh, because the differential rate of expansion seems to me to be a better idea to use aluminum in the aluminum head, that's what I went ahead and did. Uh, I went ahead and purchased that one. 16.8 um, millimeters. I measured the length of the threads on the spark plug, and then just to verify, I made this little tool out of a paper clip. <laughs> um, so the distance right in there is 16.8 millimeters, and I use the tool by just just uh, putting it in there. Oops. There we go. And I can use it to feel. And I can feel, in fact, the hole is just ever so slightly larger than the length of my verification. Okay, next step. We're going to take this is a reamer. We're going to pack the flutes with grease so that all those nasty chips don't fall in the engine. And I will come back to you and we are going to ream this thing. Okay, so I packed a ton of grease on this reamer. I use red grease. I like using a colored grease stuff because let's see where the grease is between the ones. Alright, so the reamer's in the hole. Let's see what happens here. It's amazing with the T handle and not really pain with it. Let's see here. Okay, I've just gone ahead, I've gone a little tiny ways, and uh, now I'm going to clean the chips out and re-grease it. Uh, I can't really see it very well, but... There are definitely chips on there. So I want to make sure, that particularly those chips right on the tip I get off. I 
now think I understand why you need the deep tool. So mine is okay. See the T-handle barely in there. In order to drive this nicely, I think it'd be hard to do it with a regular ratchet. I still think you could put some extensions on it and it would still work and we could use the existing T-tool. But I at least see why they make the claim that they do. Um, anyway, it's also hard to get out unless you have a way to pick it up out of that hole. And we're ready for another cleanup. Look how dirty that is. And the instructions say when you reach the end, clean out all the chips so that you have a nice good seat that's formed. So I'm going to do that. There's some chips on the very bottom of the tap. Just right there. And so we are cutting the seat right now, and I'm going to go and clean out the hole and everything, and we're going to uh, re grease up, and then we're going to finish it up. Okay, so I think that hole looks pretty much like the manual says it should, like the instruction sheet says it should. So now it's time to tap it, and so we greased up our tap, and we're going to use that in there. And look at that. They say that there's a lead there to keep it straight, and that's in fact what happened here. It uh, can't help but be straight. Okay, so I am going to use the uh, tools provided. T-handle again. This piece is going to go down there, and I am going to tap this sucker. So I will see you in the so That was a wee bit nerve-wracking. So, at first the tap wouldn't tap, it just uh, would not start. It just kept stripping itself out on those first couple of threads. Um, eventually I just pushed as hard as I could, and it got going. It looked really touch and go for a moment there. So, um, I guess the advice is, press hard. Ah, yeah, that's beautiful. Man. Okay, I've cleaned up the outside of the hole. Grease, and I want to clean out the inside, so what I'm going to do got a little piece of tubing here. Wrap the paper towel around the top. It's like this. Okay. Alright, and then I stuff the paper towel with the tube into the shop bag. It's going to do two things. It's going to create suction in the little tube. And it's also going to let me see if I caught anything. I'm going to keep going until I don't catch anything anymore. Alright, let's try it. Not only did I catch something in my paper towel, see that? I actually caught a big glob on the end of my tube. And there was a bigger one that fell back in. I'm going to have to get that. So, this is a pretty good technique. Uh, I just haven't done it today. So, we're going to continue. Okay, I got my gigantic glob. <laughs> just a glob of uh, shavings and... Uh, oh, that's nasty. Glad I got that out. Alright, I'm actually looking inside with flashlight. Uh, let's see if I can show you if you can actually see inside. Oh, there we go. I think you can see it a little bit, but you can see inside. So I'm going to continue cleaning it out until it's completely cleaned out. I don't get any more globs, <laughs> and uh, we will now go to the next step. Okay, I've spent about an hour cleaning the hole. I didn't do a very good job of keeping it out. I'm down to the point where all that's coming in, a little bit of carbon, very normal on top of the piston. Making forever and still pick up those. Um, I've gone ahead and cleaned out the threads to get the grease out. They recommend brake cleaner. Um, they also have their own spray of some sort. I wish I had some. Um, but I use lacquer thinner. I use paper towels with lacquer thinner. That's the degreaser. Should be fine. I think they just want you to get the grease out so that the um, block tie will work. So that should be okay. And uh, so now we're going to put in the, uh, the insert. Okay, so here's the setting tool. It's very interesting. The um, insert itself screws in there. So it goes in there like that. So, lightly tighten the socket cap screw. 
very busy tightening the socket cap screw. Oh, oh. Alright, so now the next step is to put some Loctite on it. Um, and then uh, to insert it. So I just put it in, and I used the torque wrench, used the beam type, and I took it to about 20 foot pounds. I was told that you can't really gorilla these things in, so I didn't want to just sort of force it, so I think we're probably good. Alright, so now next step is to take the driver tool out. So I took the um, the screw out altogether, according to the instructions. The driver should now just come out. I hope that does. See that? And look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. One driver out. Okay. Spark plug hole. Okay, final step is to put it in and put some oil on this uh, lock in tool. And actually, I have the right oil substitution. Alright, so that goes in there. And what they say is supposed to happen. So it's supposed to get tighter and then looser as it pulls the last couple of threads. Supposedly that's the whole thing. <laughs> Alright, theoretically that is done. So, proof is in the pudding. I will put the uh, valve covers back on and I will start the car. Let's we'll see what happens. Uh, one more thing I found out, or two more things I found out. First of all, uh, I used too much Loctite, and um, ended up dripping inside the cylinder, and I had to go sop it out with uh, paper towels. So that's that right there. And then while I was doing that, I found one more big blob of uh, chips and stuff. Uh, so, so I guess it got pushed out by uh, the insert. So. Check again in your cylinder for uh, blobs of chips um, after you uh, put the insert in. Alright, so now we will go and uh, put the plugs in and start the car. Okay, here we go. Time to start the car. completed repair.